Why did the Rebbe ask us to wear silk kapatas on Shabbos and Yom Tif? Let me just tell you something by way of introduction. Um, this was printed years ago in the Kfar Chabad magazine and may be printed, reprinted in the Sefer Yemei Melech. There was a newspaper that came out in Israel called Hatsoifeh, Hatsoifeh. Maybe it still comes out. Which was a from paper, but like a Mizrahi, like a modern Orthodox type. And um, somebody found an article written in 1935, circa, in the Hatsoifeh, where he tells a very interesting story. He writes, he was in Paris, and in Paris, people did not really have their own sukkahs, it was not allowed. So people used to go to the shul to eat. But the Parisian kihili was Ashkenaz. So they don't eat in the sukkah on uh, Shemini Atzeres. So Shana Rab, in the afternoon, the sukkahs were locked. This author writes, I'm not the world's biggest tzaddik, but I come from Chassidim, he says. So I have this hang-up that Shemini Atzeres have to eat in the sukkah. But the sukkahs are closed. So I discovered that there is, in the Latin neighborhood of Paris, a son-in-law of a Rebbe. That's why he never mentions the Rebbe by name. A son-in-law of a Rebbe. And I asked myself if I can come and eat by him. And of course he was very uh, generous and very uh, agreeable that I should come and eat by him. So he says he went to eat in this home. And he walked into the apartment, the studio apartment. It was the son-in-law of a Rebbe and his wife, the daughter of a Rebbe, in this tiny little apartment. And they had built a sukkah on their fire escape. And there were seats for two. So she sat in the house. So he said, I immediately felt uncomfortable because I knew I took her seat. And he says, frankly, I, I, it wasn't that, I wasn't such a frumak that it was negayet to me, b'chayim, yehodeg v'ayave, to eat in the sukkah. So I offered to leave. I don't want to take her place. And they were so generous, they were so genuine in how they invited me in that they made it easy for me to sit in the sukkah even though I was taking his seat. And he sat in the sukkah with what we now know is the Rebbe and he talked to the Rebbe and they had all kinds of conversations. The punchline of the conversation was that to be a son-in-law of a Rebbe in a chatzar of an Admur, living in the Rebbe's Dalaramis is not a big deal. But to live in the Latin neighborhood of Paris and to be over there, the son of Lava Rebbe, this is a kunz. This was how he finishes his article. Now, the Vailai told you a story, which is always good. But in the course of the conversation, one of the issues that he raises is how come Hasidim wear long and black? And this son of Lava Rebbe said it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter the length, it matters that it should be silk. So, this is why I'm telling you this. The Rebbe said to him that it's not about the color and the length, it has to be silk. Now there's a maimer from the Rebbe Rashab, some place, a footnote where he mentions why on Shabbat Yom Tov we wear silk. I'm going to mention to you that when the Rebbe first became Rebbe, he told Rabbi Gringlas, Allah v'sholom, z'cheni levracha, that it's time, as younger lives don't gain medzaydens, that the Hasidim should wear on Shabbat Yom Tov silk. The reason Labavitch Hasidim in Russia did wear silk is because they couldn't afford it. But according to Hasidim, and by Chabad Hasidim, this is, Serious, Shabbos and Yom Tov, you wear silk, not polyester and cotton, silk, sidons. The reason is because there's different levels of garments. The densest garments are made of leather. Because leather is considered, Kabbalistically, a very low garment. It's representative of klipa, which is why shoes are made from leather. Leathers are considered a very, very big uh, concealment, and I don't have time to go into the Haladiches, but there is a malach called sandal, sandalfein, which is a malach representing Asiya. There's a malach which is called matat, which is representing Yitzira. And it says in Svarim that matat is Chanoich. Chanoich was mentioned in the Chumash and Breshis, who passed away at the tender age of 365 years. And it says in Chazal, Chanoich was Eisem and Olam. He was a shoemaker. And there's a whole explanation of Pikabola. Why was he a shoemaker? Because he represents the lower worlds, Yitzira and Asiya. And in those worlds, the Levush is a Levush gas. It's a thick garment made of leather. Leather presents a very dense garment that conceals a lot. And above leather is uh, other clothing made from the products of animals, like hair or wool. And above that is silk. Because silk... The silk is produced only by taking the life of the animal that produces the silk. So it's considered chai. So 
The mysticism is that there's different levels of garments. The lowest level of garment is the equivalent of daimim. The second level of garment, wool or linen, would be the equivalent of tzemeach, plants. Linen, of course, grows as a plant, and even though wool is on the back of an animal, but you shear it off the animal, the animal retains its life. And silk is coming from a chai, from the actual life of the animal itself. And the concept is, clothing, garments, serve two purposes. They cover up, and they present. So the clothing present you. In other words, although clothing conceal what's behind the clothing, they also bring forward what's behind these clothing. And an ada let a garment, a garment made from a finer material, honors and reveals more. A coarser garment, a cruder garment, does much more covering up and less more, much less revealing. So in Shabbos and in Yom Tif, when there's a greater presence of godliness in the world, the clothing that we wear are the kind of garments that present and bring forward, which is why we wear uh, silk on Shabbos and Yom Tov. This is my understanding of it.